outlined an entire video. Well, not really outlined, just spitballed, brainstormed onto a card and then realized I already did that video. This is not the first time that's happened. I don't even know how many videos are on the channel at this point, but there's been enough that I'm starting to have some trouble coming up with stuff to talk about for the Wednesday videos. I'm thinking might start doing some more lists and those sorts of things. I still want to get tangled in traps. That happens a fair amount with channels that do a lot of lists. I've seen that before. It's like you do a few of them, then all of a sudden it's all that you can put out. <laughs> I don't want to get stuck in that. So I have a few things that I would like to talk about that are all relevant to things that I like to talk about. Cold hardy palms, palm trees that suck, good houseplant annuals. Think that will have already been out. Yeah, fun stuff. Anyway, so it's really neither here nor there. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Voice just cracked. Second puberty. Gotta love it. This has been a problem. So the heater blew up the other day. Not like an explosion. Saying blew up when you're talking about a heater sounds more dramatic than it actually is. A uh, uh, pressure valve, something inside of it went pop, and the water was pumping out all over the place. So the pool shut off for right now. Not a big deal. Somebody's coming out to replace that valve. And they said it's inexpensive and a quick thing to do. But uh, I think they might be here for a while. And this is my only day to film out here. And it's going to be really awkward. I don't want to be out here filming while there's people working. So I don't know what to do. I need to plant a few things that I don't think is worth filming. If I could come back and show you where I put them once they're in the ground. So I have this beautiful, beautiful, thirsty. Everything is so thirsty. This drought gotta say i'm getting sick of this it's been like a month and a half since we've had enough rain to actually water anything out here this is the desert orchid from proven winners want to get that in the ground i have a uh, fort mcnair chestnut that i'd also like to get in the ground and wait for things to cool off and then i have a whole bunch of ewes which i wouldn't show you filming those anyways because it's gonna be on the back side of that berm he won't even be able to see where i put them and then uh, the carolina allspice needs to be planted and uh, I need to do a ton of watering because, like I said, everything is just so freaking dry. I already watered today. It's been about four hours and things are already dry again. I don't know how y'all in the southwest do this. This is insane. And look at, look at this. Look at, look at, these were just watered. About three, okay, about four and a half hours ago. Still, that's crazy. When there's humidity out here, I only have to water once a day, sometimes only like four times a week. This is stupid. <laughs> Uh, is what it is. Hopefully we'll get some rain soon. I also need to go through and uh, do the root stimulator on all the new stuff that I planted over in that shade garden area last week. And it's time to start spraying. But I just, I don't know. I don't think I want to do it yet. And I need to put down what's probably going to be my last application of slow release fertilizers on everything out here. You, come on, so dramatic. I'm sorry to think about just ripping this impatient out because it wants so much more water than the Eureka Palm does. It's, it's ridiculous. Need to figure something else out there. But yeah, I figured, so while they're here working, I'll go and I'll dig and I'll plant stuff because we're not gonna, we're not gonna film that anyways, right? Gotta set up tripods and all that stuff so uh, you can see me dig a hole. That's not entertaining. Not for shrubbery that's just being like randomly dropped into spots, right? If I were planting up a nice row or a hedge, a drift of something that would have a nice before and after, maybe, but that's not what's happening here. It's hi baby, hello. I know. Talking to the camera, not you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he wants to get in that pool so bad. I don't know why he's waiting for my permission. He knows he can get in there if he wants to. Mm, yeah, so there it is. There's the intro. This is going to be a whole lot of nothing going on this week. I <laughs> hope you enjoy. This is the worst intro to a video ever. Uh, it's just one of those weeks where I'm kind of tied down here and uh, don't have a lot of spare time. So just doing audits and ends and chores gardening chores that is. I need to get some stuff in the ground. I need to come in and clean up the bananas too. Got a lot of stuff on the inside that's fallen down on them. It's not good to let it all just hang and sit on top of the other plants like that. Want to make sure there's airflow and everything. And that all, that blocks the irrigation too, right? So if water's spraying down, nothing of the stuff that's covered by those leaves is going to get water. How are the ones over here looking? Eh, okay. Still pretty puny compared to most years, but I do think they're responding better to the new sprinkler heads that I put in. Not too long ago, but yeah, the bananas. Yeah, we'll talk about that during the next garden tour, but this didn't do much this year. These did. They're still probably 50% of the size that they would normally be. Hey, baby, are you going to get in? You going to go swim? Go swim. Yeah, you're free. Go swim. Turbo swim. 
There we go. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have done that because the, the people are coming over and I got to put them in the house. I got to dry off the dog because I was going to be putting a sopping wet dog in the house when they get here to work on the heater. Such a good boy. Yeah, shake off. Good shake off. Good boy. I just need to teach how to use a towel. Okay. Missed out on a lot of action. I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but it turns out I think I'm going to talk about it. The use, because I never come back here. I never show this part of the garden, so it seemed like a weird thing to film. But this ended up taking like three and a half hours, so <laughs> want to make sure it counts. Planted up nine new shrubs in here, all used. These are Hicksy I use. They go about eight to 12 feet high, maybe three to four feet wide. They're planted very close together because this is supposed to be a hedge. As you can see, the laurels don't love it over here, right? So I'm just preparing for the inevitable the catastrophist in me assumes that in not too long eventually these laurels are going to be gone and I'm going to be very sad and not have a hedge here anymore so last year I planted I don't know six of them something like that I lost a few during the winter time it was their first winter and uh, now there are more <laughs> a lot more I brought it down further so it comes all the way down here to the end of this berm and uh, yeah it's not much to see right now but hopefully in a few years, this will be very nice. When it gets about four feet tall, that's where I'm gonna cap it, more than likely. And then if the whirl hedge dies, then I'll just let it go. Let it grow and do its thing. I know three and a half hours is kind of pathetic and embarrassing. If there were a lot of rocks, I found some stepping stones that have been buried on the inside. Roots and pipes, it was more of an excavating kind of situation. I can see when I'm looking in here too, is I need to come in with a good amount of mulch and bring things back up. You know, erosion over time, this berm, things wear down. It's hard to tell on camera, but this is a berm. It goes up and comes back down. And this backside got washed off pretty heavily in the springtime, so I need to come in. I'll probably actually add some topsoil, garden soil, and then do some mulching. So I would like for the actual planting bed up higher to be, well, higher, right? The peak right now is where the laurels are, and it's supposed to be pretty much on a flat plane on top, and instead it's curving down. So it needs mulch, that's very important. One of the use wasn't looking too hot, but I think it'll be fine. Main thing is just to keep them well watered every single day for the next couple of weeks, and then you can cut back to like three times a week, and then two times a week after a few weeks, and so forth. You get, just need to get them established, winter's coming. This is an okay time to be planting them. The ground's nice and warm, air's fairly cool, but we are in a drought. So if these weren't going into a shady area, I probably wouldn't have done this right now be pretty risky and uh, I know the pedicets the pedicides they look pretty bad that's just the time of year they fizzle out right around mid-august something like that and start to look kind of crummy over here on this side but they come back every spring they look very beautiful when they do for right now I just went through it and pulled <laughs> all the ones that were in the way because why keep them there why trip over them if I don't have to was thinking that I might come in here and plant in front of these with a bunch of carex maybe the ever rios I don't know if you call it Everrello or Ever Rio, but I, in my head it's Ever Rio. That might look nice. It's kind of a golden color, and they're pretty tough. I think they're a zone six and up, semi evergreen. The further north you go, that would look good. Then I remember how long it took to dig all these holes, and I'm thinking, eh, maybe not. <laughs> Perhaps if I can ever find them in a plug, then that might be a good option. But uh, as it is right now, I don't know. I think I'm good on planting stuff over there right now. Toby, did you do that all by yourself, Toby? Look at you! Oh, you didn't make it up all the way. <laughs> Would you like some help, baby? From back there, I thought that I'd come around and he had jumped up here all by himself. That would be a pretty big deal. post surgery. Look at you, too. So cute, so handsome, such good-looking doggies. Yes, I'm talking about you, Turbo. Very good boy. Um, okay, well, Toby, here's the deal. We're not going to stay down here, so you probably don't want to lay there. You're going to want to follow me to the other side, right, Tobes? Yeah? Okay, so you couldn't get up all all the way but your solution is to go around that works here we go i'm proud of him toby update there it is he's good uh, we are now what two and a half weeks post-surgery six pound lipoma removed his posture is so much better now that he doesn't have that freaking tumor i shouldn't call it a tumor it's a lipoma weighing him down he's getting around really well his coat looks good his coat looks a lot better actually Still uh, kind of regaining, uh, not his strength, more his, how would you describe it? I guess just getting his coordination back. That would be the way to say it. Because he's had this massive thing swinging between his legs 
for the last couple of years so he's kind of got a Warren had to move again, but he's doing really well going up and down the stairs. Much better now than he was before the surgery. Doesn't seem to have any pain or discomfort. I think the surgery was the right move. Don't know I was on the fence about that one. We did. Do you want to go inside? Or do you want to hang out here with me? What are, you, what are we going to do? I'm going to let him hang out here with us. I think some fresh air would be good for him. He's been staying inside an awful lot lately. So as far as the rest of the planting goes, they are plants that need sun. And... Uh, until the forecast is giving me more certainty about rain, I just don't want to do it. I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the first clip that we're in a severe drought right now. Like back here, everything looks nice and green. But if you go, if you're in St. Louis, you go drive around, everything's brown, yellow, and crunchy. We need rain very badly. They're saying it's supposed to rain this weekend. Because I think there's actually, as I'm speaking, a hurricane hitting Louisiana. I hope everybody's okay if you're in the area. That usually means that we will get rain when there's a hurricane down there in the Gulf, you know, right around Louisiana to Florida. Normally that means there's gonna be some kind of precipitation, but I just wanna wait. And the orchid tree, I realize that the spot I wanna put it is currently occupied. I want it to go over here where this hibiscus is right now. And the hibiscus is doing fairly well. Got a good amount of yellow on it, but I think that's because I need to come in here and actually I need to adjust this drip on there. I was tugging on that the other day and I don't think this is getting very much water. So that should help with that. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'll just wait. It's a shrub, it can be planted in the fall. It'll be perfectly fine with that. It's not going to mind. So my main thing was I got nine ewes planted. I feel pretty good about that. So now I would like to, uh, I guess call it rearranging. I have an oleander that's been back there in the shade for a while. It wasn't originally shade, but you know, the sun shifted, well, the earth has shifted. <laughs> There's not as much sun where it was. It needs to go someplace with some more sun. And then this pump, get out of there. I have these two Vichia palms over here. So I should go ahead and clean up and get those moved around. I need to do some pruning because yard waste goes out tomorrow and uh, root and grow all that stuff in the shade garden. Oh, and I got a package right there. Nice heavy package. It's got stuff in it to go in the shade garden, some more plants. I really need to get these things cleaned off. I had this stuff, it was in a video night too. Well, yes, it was a long time, it was like three years ago. Uh, I was going to say not too long ago, that you soak your tools in and the stuff, the rust, just comes right off of them. But I don't know where it is. It's in a garage somewhere buried with who knows what. I'd like to get that done. Now oh, they're still sharp enough to cut the bananas. It'd be a pretty big concern if they weren't. That would be bad. Bananas are typically pretty easy to slice through. You can see how these are all hanging down blocking everything pretty sure i already talked about this this is such a challenging spot to prune it like i can't i can't really get in here but i'm gonna do my best to get back as far as i can the problem is me being the genius that i am i planted a needle palm right in the front of this bed which means that sorry that bed camera work um there's big sharp spiny things right <laughs> right where you don't want them and that I can't just crawl through that because, you know, you get stabbed. Should I cut this banana out of here? At first I left it because I was like, well, that's kind of cute. But if I leave that next year, it's going to pop out. And then I'm going to have a clump of bananas right in front of this garden bed, which is pretty stupid. <sighs> I think that's definitely something to consider and think about. Be to try and get in there. Oh, that whole piece came off. Oops. It's fine. It's a banana. We just tuck it back up in there. See, it's okay. I have developed a habit of holding the camera with my right hand because I used to keep my hand cupped around it, my right hand cupped around the microphone, so it'd make the audio better. But I've been using a wireless for the last few weeks that I think I'm liking. We will see. I don't like that it, for some reason, picks up on every single breath that I take. I think that's kind of obnoxious. But uh, I keep forgetting that I can use my right hand while I'm doing things. And I have lots of tripods, but I don't know. I just like to bring people along for the movement. I think it makes things more interesting. That's going to be a problem. I don't, can I get that? Can't reach it? Barely. There we go. Get that out of there. I think this right here might be the last one. That's gone. I don't, I'm not going to be able to reach that one. Oh, I forgot there's some, I just forgot there's some brown pieces in there. Yeah. Do we think this would look better if that weren't there? I think it would make more sense to not have it there at this point, partially just because the sun has changed. I keep saying that the angle of 
the sun is different now, so cutting that out would mean more sun could get in there. I need to go get the machete out of the garage anyways. May as well cut it back. Okay, so remembering that I can hold the camera with my left hand, but am I going to stay on top of actually keeping things in frame? I grabbed the machete. It was fun. It was cute having it over here, but it's got to go. I think that it would look better if it were gone. And that does look better, right? You agree? I just didn't want it to end up taking off and then putting out a bunch of pups. It will still grow from down there, but there's only several weeks of growth left this year for him. I think that just giving it a chop should be enough. If it comes back up high enough, I'll just chop it again. Okay, and while I'm chopping bananas, I think this one back here needs to grow. Only because, well, one, I didn't plant it. I did. I mean, they didn't just appear out of nowhere, but I don't remember planting them over here. <laughs> it was probably just a crazed moment of digging up banana pups, and I shoved one over here at some point. But it's shading things a lot. Like, the wave petunias back there is basically dead because it hasn't been getting enough sun. The part where the leaves aren't covering it still has some green on it, which I'm okay with. I, I kind of gave up on that wave petunia because there are other things out here that I <laughs> think look better. And uh, it was being a pain in my butt. And, I, you know, if you're taking care of something that's not growing for you, why are you taking care of it? I just basically gave up on it. But I think that it would look better if these were not here, because then I could move the Adenidia palm back over here into this corner. I think there's enough room, right? Could I get that in place of the trunk? Is there enough space there between the needle palm and the sable? Uh, actually... Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's not. This might be, maybe I shouldn't do this. But I, well, I still should because everything over here is shaded. Huh. I just, I really want to get this thing off the patio. It's been bugging me for a long time. So I'm just, it's got to go. All these bananas, they need to get out of here. Let some light back into the garden for all the plants. I think that'll be, oh yeah, it already looks better. Even with, you know, all the banana corpses. Huh. Wow, that looks so much better. There's a little bit of sarcasm there. Just because I was used to the big banana leaves, but this just makes the most sense. The sable miner that's over here wasn't getting enough sun. Things only opened one frond this entire summer, which is unusual. It usually puts out, you know, three or four. Needed more light. They're blocking the dichondra, the coconut palm, the passion vine. Just need to open the spot up. I think as far as the health of the plants goes, this is better, and now I can get in here and get the patio cleaned up. Things are open again, which is good. It's been, been bugging me for a really long time. It's one of those things where I knew it would be a fairly quick project, but just all the other things kept getting in the way. This is good. I'll get used to it. It's a drastic change. Anytime you remove a banana, it's kind of jarring. You know, these giant big banana leaves, they have an impact. When you take those away, you go, oh, whoa, what happened? But, uh... Yeah, I, like I said, for the longevity of some of the other plants that are over here, I think it's better for those to be gone. And uh, this just, it makes more sense than just having that thing just sitting on the patio. That made no sense having it sitting there. Oh, the pot was bugging me, so I dropped a sun patient in front of it. It's kind of a lanky one, but uh, it's doing a good job, I'd say, at blocking the container. You can hardly tell it's even there. Yeah, I know it's just a little wonky. That's okay. Don't shame the trunk. It's fine. It's just the way it worked out with the way the ground was down there. I needed to pull it a little bit further to the right. I don't know why it's going this way. To the right. But if I had gone much further, the pot was going to start to push on that sable, and I didn't want the pot to be covering around the drip zone for the needle palm or the sable palm, you know, the water line, right? I want to make sure that stays opened. So that's where it is, and it's fine. All right. These guys over here. Vichias. I think that these old shafts should just pull right off of there. Yeah. I guess I didn't really need to pull that one off. Probably don't need to pull this one off either, but looks like it's happening. Sometimes when you start going on these things, it can be difficult to make yourself stop. I think that's good. That's nice. We got our first ring. I guess there was already a ring down there, but you couldn't see it because it was all covered up. It's exciting. So the problem with these is that the only real spot I have for these and really anything else that needs sun is over by the iguana cage. <sighs> yeah, I guess that'll have to do. I prefer to not have plants randomly strung around the patio, but it's the only spot this time of year where I'm seeing sun for them. I went off to the edge because I was checking my 
transmitter. Make sure that microphone's on. Yeah, it's fine. I know the old enclosures back there is because it's where I gotta put that guy when I clean the inside of the enclosure. I'm thinking about moving this coconut palm too. The whole reason I have this coconut over here is so I could transition it to more light. And it's been a few weeks now. And if I already have plants over there, I'm gonna have to be hand watering. Then I may as well go ahead and put this over in that cluster, right? I mean, that makes, makes sense in my head anyways. I would say this thing has done a fairly good job rooting in there. It's pretty solid. Only issue I really have with it at this point is that it wants to blow over constantly because what's well, so top heavy. So it'd be smart for me to find something to pile around the coconut so that it stands upright. But for now, I'm just gonna utilize that little corner in there. That'll help hold up and actually, okay, I think that looks kind of cute. I'm sort of liking the palm jungle over here by the iguana. I uh, need to move this. Don't need to block his light. Probably wouldn't appreciate that. That's just uh, his edibles. Hibiscus, peppers, stuff from the munch on. Oleander, huh. I could tuck it over in here, though I don't think it's going to get enough light. Although if that Asclepius is blooming, the Oleander would probably be okay. Especially now that I've opened things up. I really wanted to put one of those uh, Pharaoh's Dream Colocasias over there. So I think I might just, I'll just move this over to go hang out with the palm trees. The main thing I had to remember with this though, is that it can't get near the iguana. They can eat a lot of things we can't eat, but I have a feeling oleander's probably not one of the things on the list. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I just want to give it some more light. In several weeks, it's going to be over here anyways. We'll be getting plenty of light at that point. I really should cut this ginger out of here too. I mean, clearly that doesn't work, right? When you have a door you want to walk through. I just can't bring myself to do it. It's been here for years since the first year that it's actually blooming for me. So I think I'm just going to let it finish its thing with the flowering and then next year when it starts to come up, I'll lift it and move it somewhere else. I had gotten the Slim's Orange Hidikiums. I just called this Hidikium before. You know what I'm talking about. The butterfly gingers. Planted them up last year over around the corner. I wanted to grow them out, see if I liked them because those only get about three feet tall and I thought, well, that might look good over here. But I'd, I've grown them out now and I don't like them. Which I'm pretty sure I talked about in the garden tour. You see them down there? They're just really stringy looking. I'm not really a fan of the growth habit on them and they don't have the most big impressive flowers as far as a hadikium goes anyway. So I don't you know, I don't think I want them over there. And then I have that Pharaoh's Dream Colocasia, an extra one that I can put over here. I want it centered underneath that window, but I don't want to transplant a Colocasia while we have this drought situation going on. So that may just have to wait a week or two more because it's going to rain at some point. Well, heck, by the time this video comes out, it might be raining, hopefully. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and open up the box here. I got some fun stuff in this package. Oh, no, no. First, I found the stuff I was talking about. The Evapo Rust Super Safe Rust Remover. There's all the info right there. The reusable part? Eh, okay. I guess if you want to use it and pour it into a jar, you could. So I've only used it a few times, and the first time I used it was in a video, so I'm not going to go into this too much, but basically you just you take your rusty stuff, you soak it, and that's it. And then all of a sudden your rust is gone. I don't know. That's that's all there is to it. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Just going to take these, let them soak in there for anywhere from 1 to 24 hours. That's, that's what it says on there. Okay, now, now we can dig into the package. When I saw this on the front porch, I was like, um, what? Did I order chickens? But that was actually what went through my head. Like I had at some point, like had an ambient moment and ordered chickens. I don't know why I don't want chickens. I don't know why that was the first thing that popped in my head. Not that chickens aren't great, but it's just something else to take care of. That's not something I'm looking to do right now. So this package is from Conifer Kingdom up in Oregon. It's a pretty, I don't know if I want to say prominent website, but they advertise a lot, so that makes it seem like they do an awful lot. I don't actually know. I've never ordered from them before. The plants that are in here are plants that are typically more expensive here at the local nurseries. And uh, when the thing that I got a pop up from them, I think I was on Etsy or someplace. It was, you know, where you're scrolling and they're running ads. May have been Instagram. I don't know. But I went ahead and I thought, you know what? 
they might have this plant because I remember when I did a video on what's in here, I used their image in the video to show what the particular plant looked like. So I was like, well, maybe they'll have it in stock and I could order it from them because the nursery that I got the one from, the rest of the ones they had in stock while I was there anyways, just really weren't looking all that hot. So I'm hopeful that what's in here is going to look nice. The price was just a little bit better than going local with them. And uh, it was free shipping. These don't look too bad. They've clearly been cut for shipping, which I don't know if that was fully necessary. This is a very bendy, flexible grass. But, uh, well, they, they did it. What's done is done there. Don't think that was necessary. They didn't need to do that. Oh, the whole thing's wrapped up in a baggie. That could make it easier or harder to get it out. <laughs> what are you going to do here? Get the feet on each side, squeeze down. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I kind of like that. Quick, easy, and clean. Well, they're not unboxed yet, so I'm getting ahead of myself there. Yeah, these are Hakanakoa Lemon Zest. Or is it Lemon Twist? I think it's Lemon Zest. There are several different varieties, variants with the Hakanakoa is the Areola. And that is what it's called, Areola. I might not be saying it right, but it's just the golden. That's the most common. And I like it. The lemon zest has more white in the variegation on the inside. When I was planting up the shade garden in last week's video, I planted one of these and mentioned that I wanted to plant more. And I think I even put up on the screen that I ordered four more. So that's what this is. It's four more. Oh, wow. They're all taped together, too. Okay. So this is going to take a while to unpack. I'm going to get these out of their containers and see how they're... There's the packaging. That's how they ship the things. Did I mention... I did mention free shipping. I don't know why it wasn't a promo or anything like that. It just was free. This worked out being significantly cheaper than had I gone to the nursery to get them. And I always prefer to support local when I can, but it was big savings doing it this way because they're like 30 bucks a pop at the nursery. Sometimes you can find them for like 21, $22. Like I said, the only time I've ever seen these at the nursery, the lemon zest or twist, whichever these are, they uh, only had one that looked decent and I bought it and the rest weren't looking that hot. So that's why I opted to order was to save some money in the sales tax. Oh my gosh, the, it's, it's almost 14 point, I think 3% where the nurseries are that have them. Yeah, Lemon Zest, there's the name. So save a lot of money because of that too. You still have to pay state tax, which is like 3.5%, but it was just, I needed to save some money and I wanted to try this place out, Conifer Kingdom. I've looked at their stuff plenty of times, but never placed an order. I still don't understand how the shipping was free. I kept messing with the shopping cart thinking that, like maybe something was wrong. So it wasn't just free shipping, this shipped out yesterday. So it shipped overnight too. I have it covered up on here. I taped over it, but it did, it said standard overnight. You can kind of see the word overnight there. See it? I didn't ask them for that. It was just free. I don't know if that's normal for them or not, but that's, that's how it worked out, and I'm okay with it. <sighs> They're so pretty. I kept thinking while I was getting all the tape off, what if there were chickens in there? I don't, what would I do? I don't take Ambien, by the way. Now, there's anything wrong with that, but that was the first place my mind went, because, you know, like, when Ambien was a newer thing, people were, like, buying cars in their sleep and those sorts of things. I don't, it would be time to probably seek help if I woke up in the morning there were chickens on the front porch. I also don't think I would do that. I think if I were to sleepwalk or sleep shop, I guess that's what that would be. It would probably be something like a peacock. I bet a peacock is what would show up back here. Anyways, the uh, Hakanakloas, they look great. <laughs> they really do. These are at least four times the size of the ones that I already planted. They have some crispiness in them, and that's just kind of the nature of Hakanakloa. I see a lot of pictures online with these plants where they look absolutely beautiful and I applaud people who are able to make them look like that. Usually when I see them they've got some brown on them at least by this time of year. Where I'm putting them well you'll get to see it. I need to go in all that because I'm going to plant these up right now. That's why I didn't bother taking the stuff off the pots. It's like am I going to spend another 10 minutes trying to completely get all this junk off when I'm going to go plant them right away. Nah, it seems like a waste of time. But some background, if you don't know, Hakanakloa is a very lovely grass for the shade. There aren't a lot of ornamental grasses for the shade that have an impact like these do. They, when they haven't been pruned back, they go, I think, 16 to 20 inches, and they stay more low, and they have a really nice flow to them. They look great if you have a slope somewhere where they can just look like they're sort of raining down 
absolutely beautiful plants. And you can see the lemon zest, right? I keep thinking it's lemon twist. It is lemon zest, okay. There's a very nice variegation in there. And most of the Hocken and Kloas that are on the market have variegation on them. But this is just, it's a softer, kind of lemony, chartreuse variegation. It's not as much of a harsh yellow. And that's the reason I like this one. That's also going to make it more prone to scorch, right? So too much sun, that'll do it. When I have Hocken and Kloa, I never put them in a spot where they're going to get afternoon sun. It's partially going to be all about your climate though, right? Here, where we have really hot summers and then droughts like we're having right now, these would not do well with sun past like 11, maybe noon at the absolute latest. It needs to be filtered light throughout the majority of the day. Morning sun is okay. If you live like up by the Great Lakes, Pacific Northwest, maybe East Coast, where you have more mild and steady climate, they look so freaking good in the gardens, especially up in like Michigan. I've seen them in gardens, people who live uh, on the lake and uh, they're just so pretty. And up in Seattle, I would imagine a lot of Oregon uh, on the west side of the mountains, just absolutely beautiful plants. Here in St. Louis, it's pretty normal for them to look like they're struggling to <laughs> come this time of year. And I'm hoping that the spots where I'm going to place these will help combat issues with having, you know, dried up foliage like some of these have on the inside. These are so nice. They're so big. These are much bigger than I expected them to be. I'm going to go ahead and get these planted up. So I had mentioned not planting certain things because of this drought that's going on right now. These are going in a shadier location and uh, right like directly in front of a sprinkler head. If it weren't for that, then I would not be planting them up. But there's a sprinkler right or right. I don't I can't point to it. It's over there. And it's been hitting the spot really well. Here's the one that I planted just last week. <laughs> it's actually, it's already looking a lot better. I was just laughing because the mulch keeps getting redistributed because I've also been hand watering in here. You know, everything's fresh. So I want to make sure that it's getting nice and hydrated. So maybe you can get an idea of what I want to do in here. I'll just set them out. I'll set them out and plant them. I don't even need to talk about what I want to do. You're going to get to see it. Yeah. See? There it is. Looks kind of weird enough balance because that one in the middle is really small, but there is a row of three in the front and two in the back. And this little chunk that's hanging up front makes it look like things aren't even. But when these are all nice and big, it's about 15 to 20 inch circles, 20 inch, 20 inch circles. That's going to be so pretty. Just going to be a nice drift of that beautiful, airy foliage. I love them so much. Wish they hadn't been pruned back, but is what it is. They'll grow. Hopefully get to see some nice, beautiful airiness out of them next year. Yeah, I, I'm so happy. This is something I've wanted for really, I suppose as long as I can remember. As soon as I first learned about the Hocken and Clothes, I was probably a teenager. I remember seeing pictures of big drifts of them in people's gardens. I was like, oh, I want that. It would look so nice. I never had a spot where I could pull that off before, but you can see the way the light's hitting them. It's nice and dappled, moving into the afternoon, so they're not getting direct sun. They'll get some nice bright, morning light and they're right next to a sprinkler head so that's going to be really good for them uh, i know it looks weird in hindsight i probably should have gotten two more to bring down over here but i didn't want to fill the entire garden bed up with huck and a claw i want some more room to play with things so i think the five is good maybe i could get one more to put right there but for now this is good like i said it's going to look better once these fill out and it just becomes one nice big swoop it almost looks like a wave because they blend together sort of they kind of lay into each other and it just it ends up looking really really pretty and i like this color too isn't that nice and bright considering how shady it is over here they really do stand out and they pop very very nicely good texture good color overall pretty hardy grass too despite everything i talked about with the sun and the crispiness but if you have them situated properly they're usually pretty sturdy grasses Especially when you consider just that really airy, delicate texture that they have to them. Gosh, they look so stupid because they got their tops cut off. Oh, well, you, you get the picture. You know what it's going to look like. I also thought maybe moving them forward and letting the one that was already planted be the backdrop. So having one over here and then three in the front. But I'm probably going to be putting in a wall here. It's hard to tell, but this is bermed up very high. So uh, some sort of rock or whatever it's called, Windsor brick wall something on those lines I'm like, i don't really want to move them because it takes a while to get them established I figure this is probably best to just keep them tucked back in there and it's so bright and cheery i also really like how it looks with the ginger 
next to it. That's a good contrast. That's going to fill out and form a nice big patch. That fern, when it ever forgives me for planting it, it's going to have those nice big airy fronds behind there. Really pretty. I think that's the bronze or purple bronze. Bronze, purple, royal. I don't remember. It's a royal fern. It goes three to four feet tall. So it'd be really big fern fronds behind it next year. Not this year, but at some point, hopefully the uh, Amorphophallus conjacs that are back there, they will come up and have some really big, neat looking leaves behind everything and have a nice palette of color and texture over here. This is the first spot in this entire garden where there's actually <laughs> sort of a something that looks planned out. I had everything planned out. I had to tweak and move a few things before I actually got them planted. But there was a list of things that I really knew I wanted over here. Like the Roia, I knew I wanted the ginger, the total, I thought was kind of an impulse, but it's something I've wanted to plant for a long time. Various ferns, some um, spurge or pachysandra down the other end, and the may apples that are on the other side and you can't see them. And then the middle, I still have some room to play with and lots of room over here to play with some more interesting ground covers. Oh, it's so nice you're walking around here. You come around the corner and go, oh, wow, look at that. That's so pretty. So much color. I love it. Even over here. Look at I bet if you keep going, it's still going to look pretty. Still looking pretty? Yeah? Looking good? I think so. Kind of blends in from over here, but it, it's still nice. Whew. I'd call that a productive day. Got a hedge planted. Did some much needed pruning. Cut out several banana trees. Moved a palm tree and got all those grasses planted up and... Did some rearranging with some plants and needed some more sunlight. I'd say that's pretty good. Sorry the video's not longer. I know y'all like the like hour, <laughs> hour and a half long Saturday videos, but it's just not always possible. I don't even know how long this one will be. Hopefully you get 30 to 45 minutes, but I don't know. I feel like I didn't record that much of what I was doing. I think the last thing I wanted to show is this right here. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, if even, since I put these in there. Look at that. So much better. That's, I haven't even scrubbed them. I'm going to let them sit for probably another 30 minutes and give them a scrub and a rinse. They'll be good as new. I love that stuff. Oh, and the um, root stimulator. Like I mentioned, same thing with the hedge on the down there on the south side. What were those? Yews. The yews that I planted up. I don't want to bother, or I guess I should say I'm not going to bother putting it on there until the plants have been watered in just because the ground surrounding everything was so bone dry. There's a good amount of shade over there, so having watered that entire thing like the entire hedge i used that sprinkler head on and i let it run for a long time to make sure that the entire berm was wet that should have that problem solved so tomorrow i'll do the root stimulator on all of those and the same thing with all of the hakana cloas that i put over there i did water them in by the way i just didn't show it because they don't look very good after you've watered them in they tend to wither down and just sort of fall flat so that's all good and done. It's not going to be that exciting. What is it? Three and a half tablespoons per gallon of water. I'm going to put nine tablespoons of this in my three gallon water and jug and put it on the plants. Not missing anything there. Yeah, that's good. I'm really happy with those hot kind of I'm so excited to see those fill out and fill that spot in. That's going to look so nice. And every time I was walking in and out of here, planting those up, so I had to go and get garden soil and bring some of that back over there. It's a lot of mulch over there. I guess I should have mentioned that. I raise everything up with a triple blended composted mulch so that it should break down more quickly. But what I didn't do in that bed that I realized when it was too late was I should have put down a hefty layer of garden soil first. So uh, I'm going to have to be really on top of fertilizing for the next couple of years to make sure that the breakdown from that triple blended composted mulch that's around a good section of the roots, like they're partially underground, they're partially up into the mulch because I was raising that entire bed up by a few inches. I uh, have to stay on top of that so that there's not nitrogen being pulled away from everything as that compost is being broken down. So when I've been planting things, I've been trying to dig the holes extra wide and make sure to backfill with garden soil. Uh, I think the stuff I used was just the naturals stuff from Lowe's. It's like mushroom compost, garden soil, and poop of some kind. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe it's just mushroom compost. I don't know. I feel like there's guano in it or something, but maybe not. So that's what's going on there. They have plenty of soil around their roots. Good drainage. Oh, that feels nice. I'd rather the sprinkler not be hitting me right now, but that did feel good. It's starting to get toasty out here. Oh, wait, I'd never finished my thought. I went on the ADD train and forgot to get back off of it. So I was going in and out from right here over there to that garden bed a few times while I was planting things up, you know, to bring the pots over, grab the garden soil, all that fun stuff. And every time I went through there, I went, oh, this is nice. I'm not pivoting around all these potted plants, mainly the way the 
adenidia palm was sticking out over the patio. There's a nice wide path there. It's more inviting. It'll be even more inviting when I reposition and replace some of the stuff that's clustering up over here. For now, I just need to get it watered <laughs> because the things are so dry. Oh, and the heater's fixed. I know nobody cares, but that's taken care of. Quick and easy solution. Just had to switch a valve out. Yeah, this is good. I'm happy. I think I might move this Hidicium. Hidicium. I've been doing that for years. As long as I can remember, I've been calling these things Hidiciums. Prince Hidicium. This one's very pretty. It's the Tahitian flame. It's my favorite of all the Hidiciums. It's finally, finally got a flower and fluorescence getting ready to pop up on it. I put it back here when I was filming the Plant Delights haul video. I don't know if y'all noticed when you were watching that video, but the background kept changing in between cuts. So like at one point the cushions and the chair completely changed and then more plants were showing up and plants were disappearing. Every time the camera overheated, I got bored. So while the camera was sitting on top of the fan cooling off, I would just walk around and changing up the background. And this ended up over here because it looked really good. I, I like the way, look at that. That's a nice view from right here. Isn't that pretty? It's a nice touch, but I, it shouldn't stay there. That looks dumb if you're actually walking around the patio. Just having that big tall hadikium right there. It might be good over here for now. It's over here coming up over everything since I already have the one that's sticking up and blocking the pathway. <laughs> I've made more space to be able to walk around. May as well fill back up with more plants, right? Okay, that's enough. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? Hopefully the hurricane, everybody's okay down there. Are you doing your fall planting yet? Starting to trim back annuals? Are you moving annuals in? That should be in the video that came out, to that video came out today. I need to check the comments and reply to people's comments. I completely forgot. Totally slipped my mind that that video was coming out right now. I had another video in the chamber and I couldn't remember which one was which. Oops. Do you think this looks better? I think it looks better. It was cute at first having that little banana sticking out over there, but in the long run, it's just a bad idea. It's a recipe for disaster. It's going to be cutting down bananas left and right next year if I had let that thing go much longer. This is the time to get it cut back while things are shaded over there. Never made that point. Things are shaded over here right now, so I don't have to worry about the banana rebounding just because I cut it back. Otherwise, I would need to get in there and dig that entire corm up and get it out of the ground. But with all that shade, I don't think it's going to rebound with, it will to an extent, but not with enough vigor to come back and start off shooting and be an issue next year. Uh, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.